Hey guys, um, I wanted to quickly talk about uh, my uh, off-grid kit. Um, I'm going to break this up into a couple of parts because there's a lot of information here. But I think it could be useful to some people. Um, particularly, I want to talk about my bicycle generator, which you can see here. There's my generator. And it is hooked into my off-grid kit right here. That's the inverter on top, battery on the bottom, and then all of my uh, electronics for the system are housed in that box there. But in this part I wanted to focus on the actual bike generator and the misconceptions of bicycle generators. And what I've noticed on YouTube in particular is there's a lot of these miracle kind of um, electricity generating setups that people put together. There's even companies uh, that sell these kits and they will send you everything you need minus the bike to get started or to start generating your own electricity. Now, the, the renewable energy forums, especially solar, seems to be just absolutely negative about bicycle generators. I mean, in negative in the worst way. And I've seen the comments made whenever anybody even mentions a bike with off-grid. Immediately, there's an incredible backlash against the idea. Some of that has uh, validity, but quite a bit of it does not. All right. <clears throat> now, um, a bicycle generator essentially converts your energy from you, your calories, into electricity. What it will not do, it will most certainly not power your major appliances such as your air conditioning, your space heater, uh, a desktop computer, um, your plasma TV, or whatever. It's just not going to put out the electricity that you need to get those things uh, powered. What it will power is a small laptop, a few lights, especially LED lights, um, you know, some very small appliances, uh, charge your cell phone, um, things like that. Uh, so the misconception, and I've seen these videos on YouTube, and there's one that comes to mind where this guy is in his jeans on a makeshift bike that he's got hooked up to a cheap deep cycle battery, and he's, you know, doesn't even have the... the, the proper diode for it and he's pedaling at such a slow speed probably putting in maybe an amp DC current at most into the deep cycle battery and he makes it look like that's what he uses in order to to power his uh, RV uh, the bottom line is it just does not work that way okay it just doesn't alright so the misconceptions need to be addressed this bicycle generator is part of an off-grid kit. It is not the sole energy provider for my off-grid needs. There's no way that it could be. Now, I had actually built this generator first as part of my off-grid setup because it was going to be uh, a dual purpose for me. Um, I needed to lose weight and what I had figured and what has actually stayed true is that um, I would be more motivated to be on the bike if I saw it actually generating electricity in the form of storing energy into my deep cycle battery. So there was more um, motivation there for me to get on the bike and generate. <clears throat> and uh, so with the parts that were involved, the cost, it actually wasn't that much because I was planning on expanding it beyond the bicycle generator. but. If you are thinking about doing a bicycle generator, okay, and you've seen the videos on YouTube, you've seen the websites that package these systems together that come with all the necessary parts in order to get you started, uh, and you expect that to be able to supply your energy needs, you really, really need to do some more research because they just do not your energy from your feet, I don't care if you are Lance Armstrong, you're not going to be able to put out a sufficient amount of force to generate the electricity that is needed 
to power the various items around your home. You just cannot. Um, it's estimated that uh, a human can produce about one quarter foot horsepower to turn a motor that will generate electricity. Now, a quarter of a horsepower isn't really all that much electricity generating power. Okay, it just isn't. And also factor in, a, you know, the um, the fact that you have to continuously eat in order to generate that electricity because you're burning your calories off. And once you're out of calories, then you're out of energy, okay? So um, if you're just thinking about building one of these systems so that you can get on the bike, uh, you know, for an hour every day and be good, it's not worth the amount of money that you're going to be putting into it, okay? Um, but as I said, this system here, this bicycle generator is part of a greater system, okay? I have solar panels hooked up to this. And so I built this generator with... Uh, the fact in mind that I was going to be expanding on the entire kit alright so to put some raw numbers into perspective here uh, I'll go ahead and go over the parts list and tell you what exactly I'm getting out of this system okay okay so for the bike itself this is just a standard mountain bike it is a 21 speed mountain bike I've had this bike for years um, I got it to, you know, go biking for exercise and for pleasure, and, well, most of the time it just sat out on the balcony and, um, collected rust, quite literally. Wasn't using it that much. And I actually thought about selling it, but I'm glad that I didn't, because, uh, now I'm actually using it. But, uh, years back when I got this bike, I also picked up the, um, the bicycle exercise stand as well as the uh, the razor you can see that it's actually a riser you can see that in front there I got that at Dick's Sporting Goods and basically all it does is level out the bike when it's on the exercise stand which you can see there I got that exercise stand at uh, Dick's Sporting Goods I think for about a hundred bucks years back and like the bike it sat in the closet and just didn't get any use so when I thought about doing an off-grid setup, uh, I actually had this in mind. I, um, uh, I had the bike, I had the, uh, the, the exercise stand here, so I had the necessary parts to get started. Okay, So I figured that I would build a frame around the exercise stand, and that would allow me to be able to um, St you know, basically stabilize the whole system and give me a place to mount all of my parts. Um, anyone who uses these exercise stands with a bike knows that they wobble back and forth, especially when you pick up speed. So I wanted to build some frame to stabilize it and also give me a spot to put all my hardware. Um, and so this is what I built. This is built out of two by sixes and uh, it's just simply a platform and the feet of the exercise stand actually go right into the, the frame so it doesn't move, it doesn't go anywhere, it's solid, it's stable no rocking motion, nothing, it's perfect so uh, I have about twenty dollars worth of wood here uh, no big deal but um, that was kind of where my idea got started about uh, the, the building an entire off-grid setup is that I could use most of what I already had and be able to get a good start but I did not build this thinking that it was going to be my sole energy provider it was a start but I knew that I was going to expand on it eventually okay um, you can see here this is an adjustable V-belt right here you could get um, you could size out your V-belt. The problem is, is the belt stretch, and you would need a way to adjust the distance between the wheel and the actual motor. So I just went ahead and spent the extra couple of dollars and got this belt at Harbor Freight. It's an adjustable link belt, basically. It's a V-belt, and it allows me to uh, turn the motor at a uh, very high speed. Um, this is the actual motor. It is a 15.1 amp 
280 volt, or excuse me, 280 watt, 24 volt DC scooter motor. I picked up this motor for 20 bucks new on eBay, and uh, it serves my purposes well. Um, on the end there, I have a uh, an overdrive pulley. It's a V-bell pulley. It matches the shaft size of the motor, and uh, it overdrives the um, the shaft and creates a V so that I can have this V-belt on here. It overdrives it by 3.05 inches. So it gives me the ratio that I need to turn this motor at the speed I need it to turn at while offering a fair amount of resistance so that I can get some exercise. Okay, uh, Running out of that, as you can see here, I have a blocking diode. This blocking diode allows me to be able to attach other things to this, such as a battery, solar panels, whatever, and the electricity is only going to move in one direction. It's going to move out of the motor. If I did not have this blocking diode here, then as soon as I hooked up my solar battery, it would start turning this motor. So this prevents that from happening. It's just a simple blocking diode. It's rated to 40 amps, 600 volts, and uh, I have an aluminum heat sink around it. I got this as a package deal on eBay for I think it was $12 shipped. And so this will prevent any electricity backflow into the, uh, the DC scooter motor. And of course for safety reasons, because you don't want any faults or short issues, I have a 25 amp AGU fuse on the back side. This is on the positive side, even though it's a black wire. Um, it's on the positive side. I just ran out of red wire. Um, but it will break the circuit if anything goes wrong, if, uh, if something's wrong with the battery, if there's a short anywhere along the line, this fuse is going to pick it up. It also doubles as a limiter because my charge controller is only rated to 25 amps. So if by chance, which I know it's never going to happen, but if by some miracle I'm suddenly putting out more than 25 amps out of this motor, then this fuse is going to stop it and prevent damage to my charge controller. So uh, that's, that's it for the hardware of the actual uh, bike portion of my off-grid setup. Okay, now I have probably about $75 worth of stuff here between the wood, the motor, the diode, the belt, uh, about $75 worth of stuff here. So for me, because I had already purchased the stand, because I had already purchased uh, the riser, um, this seemed like a pretty good uh, idea. And uh, you know, if I've seen YouTube videos of people building these bike stands out of wood, and that's fine. You know, as long as you get a, a place to raise the rear wheel so that it can turn freely, then you can pretty much make it out of whatever you want to. But, this is not all that's required for this bicycle generator to function, to give you the amount of electricity that you think you're going to get out of there. You also, you also need to have a battery. You also need to have a charge controller. You also need to have various wiring and fuses, and it's an, an inverter. You need an inverter if you want to run household current at 115 to 120 volts. So beyond the bicycle generator, you're going to be adding up a lot of cost. So don't think that this is a miracle cure for your off-grid setup that you that you believe that this is going to provide the needs of your household. You're going to have to spend a lot of time on this bike, okay, in order to generate the electricity that is required just to, just for a laptop, okay. Um, the real hard numbers are that I'm generating about 10 DC amps out of this per hour, okay. So it takes one hour for me to generate 10 DC amps, that's 12 volts, 12 volt amps, okay. One hour is what it takes for me to generate 10 amps. Now, when you convert that 10 amps into 120 volts, you are essentially dividing by 10, okay? So that 10 amps turns into 1 amp, and 1 amp of 120 volts AC is not that much, okay? It really is not. So, uh, <laughs> it's, um, it really is amazing, you know, when you think about it. Uh, it sounds good on paper, but then in practicality, 
it's, you would have to bike all day and all night to be able to generate any electricity out of this. Now, my 100 watt solar panel, I actually have two of them, my 100 watt solar panel produces that electricity in one hour that I would take for the bike, basically. It produces much more electricity per hour. Um, you know, I'm generating about 5.56 amps per panel out on the balcony versus, um, you know, this 10 amps per hour, but I would have to bike constantly to keep up with my two solar panels. And uh, so it's just not practical, okay? It's just not practical. Um, so I just wanted to kind of clear that up for those who think that uh, getting a bicycle generator, putting it together, is going to be cheap and it's going to be the answer to your energy needs. Now, if you were, you know, running on 24 volts or whatever, then maybe it'll work because that's a 24 volt scooter motor. But then again, you're not putting out full 24 volts until you're spinning it up is basically as fast as you can get it to spin up. So here again, <clears throat> doesn't really work all that well. And if you don't have a proper charge controller attached to your battery, you're just going to burn up your battery because it will produce more than 12 or 15 volts. And although the battery is going to act like a big resistor and bring that down, if you overcharge your battery, then you're just throwing money down the drain, basically. You need a proper charge controller to monitor voltage and only send the amount of electricity to the battery that it actually needs. Um, so I hope that clears up the, the actual bike portion of the off-grid setup. It complements my off-grid setup, but it is not the sole provider of off-grid energy. So before you look at another one of those miracle videos about how you can power a blender and all this other stuff, off of a bicycle generator really think about it those quick five minute videos are great and they do the job right then and there but if you can imagine being on the bike for an hour or two hours a day unless you are an athlete and spend that much time on a bike then it's not going to be practical for you okay so hopefully that answers some of those questions and in the next part I'm actually going to go over the entire off-grid setup that I have and so stay tuned for that video but if you have any other questions regarding a, um, a bicycle generator feel free uh, to ask because uh, I'm more than willing to answer those questions and hopefully um, clear some of the, um, the, the confusion that's out there regarding uh, bicycle generators and generating off-grid electricity